we're doing today. You're watching Schlock Car Mayhem. I'm John, and this will be episode one of New to Carrera. Uh, I've recently made the switch to the Carrera Digital 132 using the set here, and uh, I've got to be honest with you, I love it. Um, I used to be running HO, and I've uh, recently torn down my HO layout and built a, a large 8 foot by 16 foot table so I can go ahead and uh, rebuild and start running in the Carrera Digital 132. I tossed around the idea of maybe making the switch for a couple years and finally I just decided one day I was going to bite the bullet and when I did I never looked back. I love the system, everything works wonderfully. Uh, I can't say enough about it, it works very well. Okay, this is pretty much everything that's contained within the box once you open it up and do the unboxing, which I'm not going to do an unboxing, obviously. Uh, personally, I find a lot of joy in doing an unboxing of something that's really cool, like this set is, so I'm not going to deprive you of that. I respect you all too much, so uh, just enjoy the unboxing on your own. But this will give you an idea of what you're going to find inside the box. What we have is we have our control unit. And this is the heart of the system, of course. We have a dongle that comes with a wireless controller, and uh, this is what communicates between the controllers and the control unit. Of course, we have our cars. They do not come with these jewel cases. I purchased these separately. I do like the cars enough that I thought it was important to keep them in a case, so that's what I've done. Uh, we've got a bag of track clips. Over here, we've got the Carrera. Uh, standard Carrera guardrail and clips. Once again, the track clap, track clips, and the uh, guardrail clips. They do not come packaged like this. I put these in Ziploc bags just to make it easier. The plastic guardrail. Underneath, we have our digital track sections, the lane changers. Here we have a small complement of shoulder pieces. We've got our straight full sections. We have our straight one third sections the wireless charging base, the wireless controllers, and the power supply. One thing I did purchase at the time I bought the track was I also obtained the Carrera App Connect dongle. I highly recommend getting this. It makes lap counting so much easier. Uh, it's just a plug and play and you're good to go. So I would spend the extra money and pick this up, which is what I did as soon as I bought this. I bought it at the same time. One thing that separates Carrera from a lot of the other 132nd scale race sets is that the track itself is not 132nd scale, it's 124th scale. It's a little bit larger, meaning it's going to take up uh, a sizable geographic area. It's going to take a lot of physical room to uh, assemble this layout. I currently have this layout assembled on the floor in my office upstairs. I decided to, once I got the table built to completely disassemble it down to even the clips and do a full reassembly down here um, so anybody who's new to Carrera can see exactly how a lot of this goes together. What you'll find is the manual, I am not knocking Carrera, don't get me wrong, uh, the manual sometimes is a little loose in translation from German to English and sometimes little bits of inf information may be missing. And if you're like me, I downloaded manuals and everything else before I even made the purchase. And uh, I was a little confused on some parts and wasn't sure about some others. So I decided, well, when I got the set, I'll figure it out. And that's what I did. Hopefully some of these questions can be answered in this video series. At least some of the questions that I had will uh, come into play. Notice here we've got a uh, typical lane change section. This is another thing that helps separate Carrera from a lot of the other uh, 132nd scale uh, track systems is most of your lane changes are two-piece. That means you can take them at a higher speed. That was another decision why I went with Carrera instead of like Skeletrix. Uh, most of their lane changes are one section and they can be a little bit abrupt. So I decided to go ahead and go with the Carrera and I'm very glad I made that decision. Okay, so let's go ahead and run down through this thing and we'll go ahead and start putting it together and I'll show you some tips and tricks for getting this stuff assembled. 
Okay, here we are, and we're getting ready to start building this layout. Uh, right here, I've got the track plan ready to go, and we can see it right here. It's very simple, nothing difficult at all. But when you're dealing with a uh, layout that's probably going to fill up the majority of the room that you're putting it in, chances are you're going to be setting it up on the floor. Uh, that being said, what I prefer to do is I try to make it easy on myself. I'm six foot five. It's kind of difficult for me to get up and down off the floor constantly. So uh, I like to build sections. Uh, one, you know, like a curve or whatever. I'll take a section of track, assemble those, then move them over to the area where I'm going to be putting the tracks, uh, building the layout. Then I will connect the sections together. And that makes it a lot easier to get the layout assembled as a whole. So what I would recommend is if you're going to be on a uh, building on the floor, of course, make sure you have a card table, a kitchen table, dining room table for that matter. It doesn't really matter. It's a lot easier to build the sections on a table than take them and set them down in place about where they're going to go and then connect the sections together. It's just a lot easier overall and you've got a better chance of making sure your track connections are proper. So let's go ahead and let's build a section and see what we do. Building track sections is quite easy and it helps a lot if you have everything laid out by what they are. I've got my curved sections here, my full straights, my one third straights over there. These are my digital sections, the control unit, and that's it. I mean, there's very few different types of pieces within this particular set. Makes it a lot easier if you uh, just lay everything out. That way you don't have to be digging through a bunch of stuff trying to figure out what your next piece is. Okay, uh, you're gonna need very little for assembly. Since we're dealing with the wireless controllers, you're gonna need a small screwdriver so you can open up the bottom of the wireless controllers to install the battery. And something I recommend is a, I've just got a uh, rag with a little bit of lukewarm, slightly soapy water. It's not wet, I can squeeze it, it's not wringing out, it's just damp. The reason why I recommend that is all this track is packaged in styrofoam. It's packaged very well actually, but in the styrofoam you're gonna have a bunch of little styrofoam beads all over this stuff, and it's just gonna stick to the plastic naturally through static electricity. Uh, wiping them down with a wet rag will help alleviate some of that static, and it'll also make sure the track surface is clean. So as you're putting this stuff together, wipe down your track sections real good, make sure they're nice and clean, and we'll go ahead and we'll start assembly. Okay, assembling the sections and putting them together is very easy. Just refer to your track plan, and I'm going to do this section right here. So we've got a one-third straight, one, two, three curved sections, and another one-third straight. And we're going to build this section, and we're going to set it down on the rest of the uh, the other end of the table about where I'm going to set the layout up. Now, if your Carrera track is new, you may find that sometimes the pieces tend to be a little difficult to put together. Like I said, this has already been assembled once, so it's not, uh, it's not over super tight. But just carefully line up the pieces and you just push them together just like so. We'll go ahead and we'll get all these hooked in together. And just do it gently and make sure it's thorough. Make sure you got a good solid, nice and tight. Things connected good. Go ahead and attach our third section. Just like so. And there we go. Get my rag. Still got a little fuzz on here. Just want to wipe it down real good, make sure it's all good and happy. Okay, now, at this point, we're going to want to turn this section over so we can expose the bottom. That's where the track clips come into play. And the track clips are very simple. We've got them set up here and here. And if you look at the track clip, you can see that one side has a little tang or a little button on it. The other side does not. So you want to stay with the side with the tang. And now that the track is up, you want these facing up. And at that point, they just slide 
and snap right in. The reason why you want to make sure these are up, if they're upside down, you're going to have a hard time disconnecting the track because you can't push the little release tang to just pop them out. And we just want to go ahead and put these on all our joints. And these really do a good job of help holding the track in place. Now, here's a good example here. Sometimes you run into this situation where we really can't get it in there because there's another little block right here. There's not enough room to slide it in. You can either slide it in the other way, or in some cases you can take the track sections apart, insert these, and then reconnect the track. i got to add one more piece. See how nice these all fit. And we'll go ahead and drop in our clips. Now if those are locked into place, you don't want to emit the clips because this will, the cars will hammer the track apart if you ignore the clips. So you must use these clips. And I'll give it one more good wipe down. Okay. And that completes one section. It's that simple. Now I'm going to go ahead and move this over to the other end of the table and I'll keep building sections um, and we'll go from there. Okay, this is one of the uh, double lane change sections, double lane change crossover, one of the digital ones. And uh, as with all the two-piece digital sections, of course, you've got an A and a B part. So make sure everything's oriented properly before you start hooking them together. In this case, you can see everything looks to be about right as we start pushing it together. And it goes together like any other Carrera Terek. I like to check my joints, make sure that they're nice and smooth. Then I'll go ahead and flip it over. And we do the same thing with the clips. And you'll know they're in when they clip in solid. You'll, you'll hear them and feel them clip in properly. Okay, and that's it. And that's all there is to doing a digital section. Same way a standard Carrera track. Assembling the sections for the control unit area that I refer to, that this will be treated as one unit, is pretty straightforward and simple. Uh, a couple things to keep in mind is the shoulder complement and the connector for the uh, wireless charging station. Not only do they clip to the track besides just attaching in, they're also clipped to each other like in this case here. So everything gets clipped together. You've got plenty of these clips here. Uh, everywhere you see a place to put a clip, go ahead and use one uh, because they will be needed and it makes it very solid. And uh, this is really no different than what we're doing. Go ahead and turn that around. And I'm putting the starting grid on the back side because the plans call for a one-third section here. So there's really nowhere else to put this. That's by the start finish line. So I'm putting this uh, section right here. And of course assembly is the same. Everything just pushes together and make sure your joints are good and everything fits. Okay, everything looks good. These pieces, of course, are not going to stay clipped in. They're just going to sit there as necessary. And this wire, wireless charging station, if you look on the control unit, you can see there's one large port. This is the only place that has this. Um, that's for the, uh, unless you have an accessory track. And that just slides right in there. So that's really the only place you could attach it here or you could attach it here. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it can go just as well on either side. Or you can add two if you want to add a second wireless station. But we'll stick with what's in the plans and we'll go ahead and do this here. You notice that doesn't clip at all. It just sits straight. And these pieces just sit loose. 
just like these do. So now that we have these in place, I'm going to go ahead and carefully turn it over. And we'll start with our clips. Now in this case here, we can't get the clip in no matter which way we go. So we're going to loosen and remove the wireless charging unit. And we're going to install a clip into its location. Once again with the tangs facing up now that the track is upside down. And then we can reinsert this and it'll snap into place. Just like so. The same thing goes for the track of course. Go ahead and just drop the clip into place. These short, these short sections is also another case where we want to preload the connector into the track and then reassemble the track. Once again, making sure everything fits properly. And I'll just reach up and check my track joints, make sure they feel smooth. Full size track is not a problem. We don't have anything blocking the clip. Okay. Now let's take a look at our bases. Here in this case, you can see our spots for our clips are here and here. So we're going to preload a clip right there and we'll preload one here and here. And when I say preload a clip, that's what I'm referring to. Now we can go ahead and get our clip into place our uh, shoulder complement into place and then it's just a matter of pushing the clip in there's one there's two and there's three that shoulder sections in let's take our straight section In this case, there's no need for a clip there. Turn the assembly over, and you can see what we have now. Looks just like the instructions. Give it one more quick wipe down, and this will help make sure you get rid of all the dust and everything, but also make sure that you have smooth joints. Okay, at this point, I'm going to assemble the rest of the sections and we'll uh, start getting this layout hooked together and get the track set up the way it's supposed to be according to the plan. And then we'll start attaching the guardrail complement and then finally we'll get this thing plugged in and powered up. Okay, I have all of my track sections kind of oriented where they need to go. This will give me an idea of what I need to do next. Uh, in some cases, the, uh, this curve that we have right here is going to be a little bit hard to reach. So probably what I'm going to do is deal with this area right here and probably uh, get the guardrails hooked in and everything before I connect the rest of the layout. Uh, well, we'll see how that goes. But what I've done here is, if you notice, I've preloaded connectors all the way around to every section just on the same end on every section and this will make it easier to reconnect all of the track sections as we go so preload all your connectors and now in this case 
take a look here. Since the track is right side up, you preload the connectors with the little tang, a uh, little button now facing down. Okay, connecting sections together is very simple. Once again, I have preloaded um, a couple of clips right here. And then it's very much like assembling the track. You just go ahead and, but you're pushing sections together instead of individual pieces of track. And you go ahead and get them in. And make sure you've got good solid joints. Now, our clips are now right here at the edges of the track. So you reach underneath and you can feel the clip. And you want to just push the clip forward. And you'll feel it snap and click into place. There's one. And here comes number two. Just like that. Now these two sections are now mated. And we'll go through and we'll do that around the rest of the track. However, like I said, on the other end of the track, I'm going to go ahead and probably put the guardrail in place first. It'll be easier uh, because it's going to be a little hard to reach. If I completely assemble the entire layout, then I have to move the whole layout to where I can reach it. Okay, attaching guardrail. Uh, in this case, I've, uh, before I started joining a bunch of sections, I moved this section towards the end of the table and I'm going to attach guardrail to it. That way I've got easier access to get to it because where it's going to be positioned in the table, it's going to be kind of hard to reach. So I'm doing this ahead of time. So it's a good time to show you how to go ahead and install the guardrails. These plastic uh, Carrera guardrails, they're okay. They do the job pretty well. Um, but they're not exactly what I like. But as I evolve with the track, we'll go ahead and we'll change them, of course. Uh, in order to check the C to make sure you've got the right length, they come with several different lengths. Just go ahead and let it wrap around the track and you'll see it's about the same distance as the uh, curved piece itself. So that makes it easy to figure out which one's which. I'll go ahead and put that over here. And if we look at these, these are your end pieces. Let's take a look at these. And something they really don't talk about in the manual very much is what these are or how they work. Uh, they're pretty self-explanatory, but something you do need to be aware of is we have two completely different types. We've got a left and a right. So when you're pulling these things out of your bag, make sure you got the right ones. That's important because these parts here clip to the track and if you have them backwards, they're not going to clip. So I'll set these down here about where they need to go. <coughs> Let's talk about track clips. These are pretty simple. You just uh, squeeze a little button, hook them under the track and snap them into place. And they provide three per 30 degree section of track. So we'll have one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, one here. In this case here, this curve, we're going to have nine of them. And that's how that's going to work. Uh, installing them is very simple. I like to start in the middle. And just carefully pick up your track section. And you squeeze the little tang, just like this. And just hook it under the track. And just carefully push it up and let the tang go. And that's how easy it is to just drop these in place. When you get near a track joint, you got to remember you've got joiners right here. So you're going to have to start about here, your joints right here. You have to start about right here and then slide it into place. And you'll feel it stop when you hit it. And we'll just proceed like that all the way around the track. got them in you can center them up a little bit and spread them out a little bit and kind of space them out I'll go ahead and get these in here Trying to make sure you can see everything. OK, 
Okay, that takes care of the guardrail clips. That's a little far out. At that point, just go ahead and make sure they're spaced out properly. They look about right. Keep them all about even. And there you go. Now I'll take my first of the end pieces and that clips onto the straight. Meanwhile, I've got a uh, area for a track clip here, so I'll put it in over here, get as close as I can, and get that into place. Now you can see we're going to have to start spacing out a little bit further. So we'll begin our space out, make sure it looks about right. We'll do the same thing here. In this case, it's going to go over. If a you have to shift a guardrail over, always shift it to where you're adding the guardrail to the direction the cars are coming from. We don't want to add it past. Always add it ahead. Okay, now that those are in, we can just add the guardrails in. Now, if you have a section already in place like I do here, just make sure I always try to keep the direction the same. So, make sure that's good. And then we can start by just feeding it through the clips as we go. Now you can see why I wanted to uh, make sure I had plenty of room to install my guardrails or plenty of access to install my guardrails. And you can just keep pulling. As you see, it just comes right along. As we get near the end, uh, just go ahead and push your guardrail section into both channels. And there you go. Now this section over here I can do the same thing with. Okay, now in this case, what's going on is I've got to take this entire guardrail here and I've got to shift it over this way a little bit. I've got to move this whole guardrail over and get it over the uh, track clip hole right here onto the other side. That way I can connect this edge here to this section of track. So let's go ahead and do that. Moving it over is pretty simple simple as that actually. I'll slide that over its entirety. I'll take this clip off. Just like that. This stuff is pretty flexible. You can work pretty well with it. Okay, now that we have that, now we got room to connect this to the track side, just like that. Good. Now all you have to do is adjust your clips and make sure your clips are about even. And that everything's good and solid and in place. Okay, and that takes care of uh, adding the guardrail to the Carrera system. Okay, I currently have the track completed as far as the layout goes. All sections are connected. All the guardrails are now in place. 
Um, you can easily slide the layout around back and forth, just push it in a couple spots and you can move the layout around on the table the best you need to, to get it lined up as you want. Okay, we're getting ready to get everything hooked up here and uh, fire it up uh, with power. But before we do that, one thing we do want to do is we need to get the batteries installed into the wireless controllers. The batteries come in your kit. All you have to do is take this little screw, take that screw out, the cover comes off, and you just pull the little wire out, connect the battery, you'll see how it goes. Stuff the whole thing back in and put the screw back in. Once those are in, I'm going to set them in place on the charging base, just like so. What I do like to do is make sure that everything's hooked up before I put power on it. That way, if I've got a short, I know I, I know that I've got a short, and I don't have to wait till they hook something up to make sure that uh, everything's good. Okay, so I'm going to take you uh, a little closer into here, so you can see some of the connections a little closer. Okay, uh, just a few of the connections you're going to pay attention to. This connector right here, that's where you're going to plug in your uh, power. And if you see the two bumps, the two little bumps here, those go up. They do not have them on the back side. This plug can go in only one way. We come over here, the uh, tower one. That is where the wireless controller or the uh, the dongle for the wireless controller goes and the app connect will plug right here where it says uh, PC unit that's where the app connect will plug in so let's get all this stuff plugged in and uh, we'll get ready to put power on this thing okay just to give you an idea uh, this is what comes extra for track clips and all this comes extra for the guardrail clips don't throw these away, that's why I kept the bags. I like to keep them in place. Okay, everything here is hooked up. The do two dongles are hooked up. Uh, power is connected, the unit is off currently, and our wireless controllers are in place. So, let's go ahead and turn this thing on and make sure we're not gonna have any uh, shorting issues or problems. You can see the on-off switch right here. Okay, that's looking good. So right now it's showing that we got one light, which means the track is in run status. Hit the start button again, it'll go back to five lights. Okay, let's take a look and see what we have. If we look at our dongles, you see you got a blue light flashing. That's correct. And we've got our wireless controller doing its strange little dance, as I call it. And that's perfectly normal. So both of these are behaving correctly. Everything looks good, everything's hooked up quick overview of the track you can see it's not monstrous but it does a good job of uh, taking up real estate on the table that I have here so you can imagine uh, it made my office floor a little crowded so that takes care of episode one of new to Carrera uh, this is about setting your track up and getting it powered uh, the next chapter we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get some cars on the track and we're gonna get them control uh, Get them programmed along with the controllers and we'll start running cars and seeing what we have Okay, thanks for watching